Hi, it's the middle of April, so it's time for a mid-month wrap-up. And I seem to have got through quite a few books this time. I, I haven't bothered to count up how many. Um, I, I've been busy. <laughs> the first one I read was The Amendments by Neve uh, Mulvey. And this um, is published in a few days' time, the 18th of April. And it's a debut novel, and it's all to do with the um, Eighth Amendment, 1983, and the repeal in 2018 of the same amendment. Um, and it's set in Ireland and we have Bridget, Dolores and Nell. Dolores is an activist. Well, she, she was involved in activism in 1983 and we follow her and we learn about her mother, Bridget, and the complicated period of Irish history um, to do with this Eighth Amendment, which was all to do with abortion laws. Um, Nell is Dolores's daughter and her partner Adrienne is expecting their first baby and Nell has secrets because at one time she was pregnant and you know it's it's their story and it I enjoyed that one it's I love my favorite character was Dolores she's got a quiet strength and a deep love and a good heart then I moved on to John Boyne, and this is a second novella in his, um, is it The Elements uh, Quartet? I'm not sure what it is, because I read Water a, a while ago, and Earth is published in it again on the 18th of April. And Evan is, he appears in Water in only a very sort of blink and you miss him type thing. But here he's a well-known footballer. Uh, professional footballer and he's in jail no he's in court with his friend Robbie also a footballer um, who allegedly who, who Evan allegedly filmed raping a girl and the book is Evan reflecting upon his decisions um, how he left the island in water he left the island to be a painter how everything failed and he became a footballer and there is a powerful ending it's almost a coming of age story and it's John Boyne what is there not to love I'm, and I'm waiting for the third in the novella in this series to come out then I moved on to another arc that comes out on the 18th of April and this is The Night in Question by Susan Fletcher and it's a thriller set in a care home Flory is 87 um, she lost her leg a while ago, got, trundles around in a wheelchair, but it doesn't stop her doing anything. Her friend Arthur had a fall a while ago and died. And Renata, the care home manager, has fallen from the third floor. Oh, did she jump or was she pushed? Flory doesn't think she jumped and she sets about investigating. Um... Floy has her own secrets that are seriously revealed and it's told in sort of past and present as, as Floy looks back over her life and her loves. So that's that one. Then I read one from the Women's Prize for Fiction, The Wren, The Wren by Anne Ayn Wright. Uh, well, I, I didn't, I listened to it. This is an audible thing. It's one I liked but didn't love. It, it, it disappointed me in a, a while. I was expecting... I don't know, I was expecting more. Um, inter intergenerational story. Um, Nell wants to be a writer. She's the granddaughter of Phil McDowell, the fictional poet in the, the book, um, who is a famous poet, but he left his wife, her grandmother, when the grandmother had cancer. Her mum, Carmel, brought her up alone. And Carmel was mum's, was Phil's favourite child and the wren the wren is a poem that he dedicated to her and there's almost no real plot it's about a damaged family as neither carmel nor nell can find satisfying relationships and you have interspersed phil's poems about love and birds sadly i didn't warm to any of the characters in this one then another from the women's prize for fiction and this was Brotherless Night. And I found this to be a moving read, set in three decades, across three decades of the Sri Lankan Civil War. 
16 year old Sashi wants to be a doctor like her grandfather and like her elder brother is training to be. But the civil war comes and her brothers move towards the Tamil Tigers. As a medical student, she gets drawn in helping at the field hospitals and she finds that saving and killing are almost two sides of the same coin. And she realises that all parties, all sides commit atrocities. And in this book, we're reminded of the horror of war. It's Sashi's coming of age. And if you Google Sri Lankan civil war, the some of the characters there appear with different names in this book. So you've got, got the link sort of, and you can sort of almost put faces to these characters. Then another arc, and this was a thriller, and it's published on the 25th of April, and it's Profile K by Helen Fields, a psychological thriller with a gruesome opening. Lots of blood in this one. Um, and a killer who has no boundaries at all. Uh, Midnight Jones, she cares for her twin sister, um, and she works at this place called Necto, which is a place that analyzes data for firms, does sort of psychological testing, and it analyzes data to sort of send off to the firms. Um, and when these email, when data's being tested, an email gets pinged out, you know, sort of, your profile is being assessed, and it gives the name, you know, in this case, your profile is being assessed by Midnight J. When she assesses this profile, it comes up as Profile K. That nowhere in any training has she come across anything with Profile K. It doesn't know what it is. But this gut, this profile shows someone with no boundaries, no empathy, nothing. She thinks he's a killer. There was a murder almost down the road from where she lives. And she's convinced it's this person. And this person now has her name. Because this email went to this person saying, your profile is being assessed by Midnight J. And it's almost like a cat and mouse. And it is so good. I like that one. Then I did um, one off the Carnegie long list, um, Tiger. And this won the 2023 British Book Awards for Children's Fiction. And it's set in an alternative London um, when the empire and slavery never ended. And foreigners live in a ghetto. Adam and Sadie are treated as outsiders. And then Adam finds Tiger, a mythological creature who's injured and hunted. And Tiger opens these two children's minds to their gifts. And they set about rescuing her as a mob is beginning to march through London. Magic and gorgeous illustrations in that one. Then um, another one from the um, Carnegie Long List. And not the Carnegie, the Women's Prize for Fiction long list. And it's Hangman by uh, Maya Binyam. And this is a debut novel and it's confusing, it's disjointed, it's got a unique style. But I wonder whether the, the styling is deliberate to make you as a reader feel as isolated and out of place as the character in the book. Because the narrator, he's 55 and is returning to his home after 26 years in America uh, because his brother is dying and he gets to this sub-Saharan sub place which is not named and he recognises no one and he recognises nothing but he has people coming to talk to him and almost confessing um, he can't stop them talking and there's no names there's no real descriptions and at the end things do almost fall into place. And then another that I read from the Women's Prize long list, and that was Dolly, Restless Dolly Maunder by Kate Grenville. Um, it didn't have a wow factor for me. Um, it's the story of Dolly Maunder and her restlessness, really. She, uh, the story of a pioneered woman who sort of is a trailblazer for all women to follow in Australia. Um, but I felt that it was, you know, Dolly did this, got bored, then Dolly went here and did this and got bored, and then Dolly went here and did this and got bored. 
Um, I, I didn't feel any attachment to Dolly at all. And, but right at the very end of the book, you have this personal chapter from Kate Grenville talking about her grandmother, who it was, Dolly Morda. And you get more from that one chapter than I did from the whole of the book, which, which I found a bit odd, really. So those are the books that I read for the first half of the month. And I think my book of the month, it's between John Boyne and Brotherless Night. But I think I'm going to go with John Boyne because that was it, the, the coming of age story, Evan's story, and the way that his, his decisions affected his whole life. I, I really did enjoy that one. So my book of the first half of the month so far is Earth by John Boyne. So that's it. Happy reading. Take care.